In the early hours of a bitterly cold January day in 1940, a French Portez 63 fighter bomber aircraft was shot down over the German front line. The French pilot and his Czech gunner survived the devastating crash landing, and in the epic escape bid that followed, one of the most remarkable and enduring man-animal partnerships of the Second World War was forged. I first heard about the relationship between the Royal Air Force's flying dog of war and Czech airman Robert Bozdiak in a passing comment made by British soldier and best-selling author Captain David Blakely, Pathfinder and Maverick One. Blakely, a fellow dog lover, had read two of my previous books about extraordinary man-dog partnerships forged on the front line of war, Sergeant Rex and It's All About Trio, both of which were co-authored with the modern-day bomb detection dog handlers whose stories they portrayed. Blakely's comment was, If you want to read a truly amazing story of a man and dog at war, look up Ant and Robert Bozdiak's story from the Second World War. It'll blow you away. My curiosity peaked. I went on to read around their story as widely as I could. But one thing struck me most powerfully. While the tale of the heroic man and dog duo who fought with Bomber Command during the Second World War had seemingly been told, it remained something of a riddle wrapped up inside a mystery in an enigma. Their story was supposedly related in the 1965 book One Man and His Dog, but Robert Bozdiak was not the author of that book. It was written by the late author and journalist Anthony Richardson, and in its pages Robert Bozdiak was strangely referred to as Jan Bozdiak. Altogether, my reading of it seemed to raise as many questions as it answered. The deeper I dug, the more curious it all became. There was originally talk of a film to be made by 20th Century Fox based upon the heroic duo's life story, but for reasons unexplained it had never gone into production. I wondered why. This, of any story, cried out to be turned into a dramatic and compelling movie. There was talk of Robert Bozdiak's dissatisfaction with the book as it was published, but it remained unclear as to what exactly had troubled him. Did that perhaps explain why the book hadn't used his real name and why the film had never been made? But most intriguing of all to an author such as myself, there was talk of an original manuscript written by Robert Bozdiak, one telling the story of his airborne adventures with Ant, but one that had never seen the light of day. I wondered if such a manuscript had really ever existed, and if so, what story it might reveal. Surely it would tell the full and unexpurgated account of Robert and Ant's extraordinary adventures as written from the heart by the man who had lived it. 